Welcome, noble viewers, to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Today's program features neurobiologist and researcher Dr. Jeffrey M. Schwartz of the University of California, Los Angeles School of Medicine, USA. Dr. Schwartz, who graduated with honors in philosophy from the University of Rochester, USA, has published nearly a hundred academic articles in the fields of neuroscience and psychiatry, as well as several books, and is well versed in Buddhist philosophy, specializing in the concept of mindfulness or conscious awareness. He studies the influence of mindfulness on brain function and is an expert in self-directed neuroplasticity or the mind's ability to purposefully reorganize neural pathways in the brain. Dr. Schwartz is best known for his four-step method of treating obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, a condition characterized by unwanted thoughts or obsessions and repetitive behaviors. For example, some OCD sufferers fear germs so much that they engage in constant excessive hand washing. Supreme Master Television recently interviewed Dr. Schwartz about his views on mind-brain interaction and other topics. Dr. Schwartz begins by speaking about his book. Dear Patrick, life is tough. Here's some good advice, which provides guidance for young people moving from childhood to adolescence. That book was written with uh, a very good friend of mine by the name of Patrick Buckley. That book was done 12 years ago when he was 16. And it's letters that we exchanged that basically delve into the subject of as adolescence sort of comes upon you, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of changes going on in your mind, your brain. Adolescence turns out to be a very good subject in which to investigate this relationship between mind and brain and right. specifically what we were trying to do in that book is show that something which in the subsequent decade has become a lot more popular called mindful awareness <laughs> is useful for helping people. To answer Patrick's questions, Dr. Schwartz draws on his own experiences while undergoing the doubts and challenges of adolescence on the ideas of great spiritual masters such as Jesus Christ, Moses, and the Buddha and on his psychiatric background. The sense of social uh, acceptance and rejection is becoming yes. much more acute. Um, so these things are going on as you go from 12 to 13 to 15, and then when you hit 16, it all seems to sort of just be exploding. Right. So we were discussing in this book, um, what can you do in terms of developing what um, I've come to call the impartial spectator mm -hmm. following the great Scottish philosopher Adam Smith. Um, what can you do in terms of self-observation to help you deal with all these feelings that you're having that can become overwhelming? That term impartial spectator came from Adam Smith. He wrote a book that was published in 1759 and the title of that book is The Theory of Moral Sentiments and this book has been very influential on me. Uh -huh. So that term, impartial spectator, he used to mean that we can actually look from the outside into ourselves, taking the perspective of an impartial person. You can actually utilize a perspective of attention that is like standing outside yourself, like right. being another rational, fair-minded person who's mm -hmm. viewing you and what you're doing and thinking and has access to your inner experience. Mm -hmm. Dr. Schwartz gives lectures to diverse audiences in the US, Europe, and Asia, and writes insightfully on the philosophy of mind, especially on the role of volition in human neurobiology. His book, the Mind and the Brain, Neuroplasticity and the Power of Mental Force was co-written with Sharon Begley, a prominent senior science columnist and editor of the popular U.S. magazine Newsweek. The focus of my whole work has been getting away from what has become the accepted paradigm, the belief that everything about your mind is completely determined by and in fact 
reducible to mm -hmm. what your brain does. It's what's become a slogan that is the mind is what the brain does. The separation and integration of the words mind and brain are best understood um, by realizing that, yes, the brain is certainly responsible and definitely in a scientific mm -hmm. cultural context is very reasonably understood to be causing a lot of the content of your thinking mm -hmm. in certain ways and certainly how you're feeling about things, what we call in psychiatry the affect or the mood, um, states of happiness and sadness, the, these things can be markedly influenced by the neurochemistry mm -hmm. of your brain, but, and it's a big but, um, it's also important to realize that the way you experience those feelings, the way you interface with those thoughts, mm -hmm. the kinds of attention that you pay to it, being either mindfully aware or right. having sort of an a, a rational third-person perspective on it mm -hmm. or being just gripped by it interfaces with what your brain is doing and how you focus your attention can change what your brain is doing. Right. When science and spirituality returns, we'll learn more about Dr. Schwartz's important work of empowering people to take charge of their lives. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. people to change their perspective, change their quality of attention, use the impartial spectator, useful awareness mm -hmm. to help them understand that this is their brain sending them a false message. And then when they understand that it's their brain sending a false message, they right. can change the perspective they take on. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality, featuring respected U.S. neurobiologist Dr. Jeffrey M. Schwartz. In his best-selling book, Brain Lock, Free Yourself from Obsessive Compulsive Behavior, Dr. Schwartz presents a four-step mental exercise method for overcoming obsessive compulsive disorder, a condition characterized by unwanted thoughts or obsessions and repetitive behaviors. The specific steps in Dr. Schwartz's method are as follows. Relabel, reattribute, refocus, and revalue. In step one, relabeling, a patient's attention is focused on his or her thinking process so that obsessive thoughts and compulsive urges may be recognized. That kind of attention is very similar to what in ancient Buddhist philosophy came to be called mindful awareness and it certainly also has uh, mm -hmm. strong analogs in uh, the judeo-christian tradition in terms of having some attempt to make a connection with god and of course in a christian perspective very much with making a connection through jesus to god in a christian perspective you can actually view jesus as helping you get that quality of attention mm -hmm. that allows you to be reasonable, rational, mm -hmm. loving when you're angry, calm when you're right. upset. The second step, reattribute, involves not blaming oneself for an obsession or compulsion, but instead reattributing it to a medical condition affecting the brain. Using mindful awareness or acting as an impartial spectator is also a key to step three, refocus. In this step, one should work around their obsessive thought or compulsive urge by shifting attention to something else. Any activity with a constructive purpose is a suitable substitute, with hobbies being an excellent choice. For example, one can jog, paint, or play a game with friends. My view of how to treat obsessive compulsive disorder hinges on when people understand that uh -huh. the urge to wash, the urge to check, the, the, the terrible bad thoughts that come mm -hmm. into people who have obsessive compulsive disorder, that these things are caused by misfirings in their brain. Mm -hmm. The 15 minute rule is a useful technique in refocusing. 
Instead of acting on the urge, one should let 15 minutes pass and in the interim, perform step one through three of the four step process. Then at the end of the period, a constructive activity should be undertaken to substitute for the unwanted behavior. With the fourth step, revalue, one reassesses one's unwanted thoughts and urges and decides to assign them a lower value. As a result, one is less likely to have such thoughts or act on them in the future. However, Dr. Schwartz says a complete cure of the condition is rare. What you can do is get it to the point where you can really manage it and manage it in ways mm -hmm. that it really doesn't have very significant impacts on your life anymore. Dr. Schwartz believes we need to reintegrate spiritual ideals into science so that it can provide the answers we seek. Thus, his four-step process for treating obsessive compulsive disorder takes a different approach than that of conventional medicine, yet it is no less scientific. If you start talking about how the mind can change the brain, how the mind can influence the brain, and I've done a lot of work with a, a, a colleague by the name of Henry Stapp, who is a physicist up at UC, in University of California, Berkeley, or at the, at the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratories. Um, we, we have a very, very orthodox scientific theory based in quantum mechanics that really makes the case in a very scientifically rigorous way that attention through a quantum mechanical process can influence what the brain does. This is all mm -hmm. very rigorously done. It's been published in, in top journals. Um, my book, The Mind and the Brain, is an overview of it for scientifically um, interested lay readers. There's been significant resistance to, to accepting the view, both because it flies directly in the face of the, the accepted fundamentalist belief mm -hmm. that the mind is what the brain does. It cuts against the grain of a materialist science that wants to stress the use of drugs as a treatment for psychiatric disorders. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the main outcomes of having a materialist worldview in science and medicine is that it puts a premium on treating things with drugs. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's culturally damaging to view science and religion as intrinsically completely separated. Hopefully mm -hmm. things are changing and science is gonna become less materialistic. And that's what my whole life's work has been. Right. We thank Dr. Jeffrey M. Schwartz for sharing his ideas on the interaction of the mind and brain, blending science with spirituality. Please join us next Monday for part two of our program, when Dr. Schwartz will further discuss how people can use mind power to reach their goals. For more details on Dr. Jeffrey M. Schwartz, please visit www.hope4ocd.com forward slash schwartz.php. Books by Dr. Schwartz are available at www.amazon.com. Gracious viewers, thank you for your company today on science and spirituality. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom, after noteworthy news, here on Supreme Master Television. May your life be blessed with God's love, comfort, and light. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss. <laughs>